Colossians 3.17. This is from the New Living Translation. And it says, And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Say amen. amen. You may be seated. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. This is my foundation scripture. I'm going to talk to you about service, but, um, you know, service really is just the action of helping others, supporting others, and simply meeting the needs. That's really what service is. And before I can tell you really about how I got to this place, I have to give you some background on my family and to explain to you how I came to be here. Um, whenever people introduce me and they talk about service and... and it just always blows my mind because I still feel like the little kid from the west side of Fresno, California. And um, when people talk about what I serve and I give, and I just think to myself, that is just how I was raised. My house was a house of service. It was a house of love. It was full of love and laughter and food and just, just all kinds of things. But um, when I grew up in Fresno, California, I only have one sister and I, have, I had uh, my, my parents with me. My father has recently gone on to be with the Lord. But when I was growing up, um, our family was just open. Our house was open to everybody. You could come by, you can get dinner, you can come by and get a shower, you can come by and get a nap, you can come by and play with my toys, even if I did not want you to. So our family was just open to everybody and everything. And I was saying in the earlier services that I never really appreciated that. I didn't appreciate the fact that my house was open to everybody. Um, but as I grew older, I realized that that was the way my family was showing love, that that's how they were giving, that that's how they were serving. My father was a teacher for many years. My mother was a social worker. My sister is a pastor and a social worker and a mother of three and a wife. We're a busy family. It's a few of us, but we do a lot of work. And um, I, just when I think about my family, I just think about service. I think about the fact that my father not only tutored people in, neighbor, in the neighborhood, my mother gave counsel, she worked down at the church, but my father also did taxes for the neighborhood. And we were in a modest, I'm going to say modest, you know what that means, neighborhood. And so we knew that it was tax time because when we came home from school, we would see boxes of produce, boxes of oranges, boxes of sweet potatoes, sweet potato pies, peach cobblers, because that's how people were paying my father for doing taxes, right? And so we knew when there was lots of food, it was tax time. And so <laughs> what's interesting about that is, again, being a child, I did not appreciate that what he was offering was service because I really, this is what I did know at eight and nine and 10, you cannot take a sweet potato pie, I don't care how good it is, they're not gonna exchange it for the Jordash jeans that you want, right? So I had a problem with it growing up, but now I understand that it was just a way to love to serve and to give, to offer something to the community that they couldn't get outside the community. So that, growing up in that kind of household, kind of led me to um, uh, what I believe is a lifestyle of service. I can't think of anything that I do that is not service-oriented. Um, I am a daughter, I am a sister, I am a friend, and I hope that I occupy those spaces in a place of service. I hope that anybody would call me, I would be there to serve them. I was a lawyer for 15 years, and um, it seems like a long time, wow. 15 years, and um, I came out of law school in the 90s when the dot-com era was big, and people were making money on top of money on top of money. And what did I do? I went to the public defender's office. I went to represent the indigent. I couldn't think of anything else that I wanted to do but to serve the community in that way. I wanted to be a voice that spoke up for others who didn't speak. There is a scripture, Proverbs 31, 9, and it says, speak up and judge fairly, defend the rights of the poor and the needy. And so I, even, I didn't even realize it at the time, but that was shaped by my family's dedication to service, my, my desire to want to serve the, the needy and the poor. And so the other hat that I wear, as Pastor Hamilton mentioned, I'm, I'm a minister. I was called to the ministry. We're all called to the ministry. You know that, right? We're all called. We're all called to serve. But I accepted the call to ministry, and that just simply means to serve. So it is my pleasure to serve at Maranatha Christian Center alongside my friends. And so service it's just what I know. So when people give you an award and say it's because you serve, you just think, that's really interesting. This is just me living. This is, what I, this is what I do. It's what I know. And the last hat that I wear is that of judge. I was appointed to be a superior court judge about five years ago, and it has been a very 
interesting and exciting and wonderful experience. When you first become a judge, no one tells you what it's going to feel like. No one tells you that once you put on the robe, you lose your name. Nobody calls me Shalina, they call me judge. In the mall, they go, hey, judge, right? And it's just, it's just an odd thing. Um, you know, I was a lawyer, so people would argue with me constantly, right? Now they're just, yes, judge, whatever you want, judge. Yes, your honor. It's just weird. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool, but it can be a little bit weird, right? And if you're not careful, you know, the, the position of authority and a power, you can forget that what you're supposed to be doing is serving, right? You forget that we are public servants, that we are supposed to be serving. And so I just really had, I was uncomfortable with the position. I was uncomfortable with how it made me feel, that people were serving me. And I wasn't really clear on what service looked like from sitting on the bench. And so I went to the Word of God, which is what you should always do whenever you're confused or concerned or you're not really sure what to do next. You should always pick up the book because every answer you will ever, ever need in every area of your life is in the book. So I picked up the book, and I looked at Matthew 20 and 28, and this is what it says. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. Amen? No greater authority, no greater power on this earth ever walked than Jesus Christ, right? And so when we find Jesus, we find him doing what? Loving, giving, serving. We, saw, we find him washing the feet of his disciples. And so I thought to myself, okay, I get it, I get it. It doesn't matter where you sit and what you do, service should be a part of it, right? So when you are in a position of authority, and if you are, you're here, you, you are over people or you're over projects, you should remember that God has given you that authority and he's given you that power not to wield it over people, but to serve. The higher you go, the more people you can reach. So. The first thing um, that I, that I want to share with you about my journey and about uh, Jesus being an example for service is that service is very intentional. Service is not willy-nilly. You don't just, it's not just anything. Service is intentional. If you look at the life of Jesus, he was very intentional about everything that he did. He came here to do what? He came to serve. He came to heal. He came to deliver. And ultimately, he came to die for us. Amen? It didn't matter how, if he got tired, and we know that he did. It doesn't matter if people weren't treating him right because we know that they weren't. I mean, it didn't matter that if his friends, one betrayed him, one was cutting off ears and denying him. You know, he had all kinds of things that were happening in his life, but he didn't allow that to stand in his way of service. So I want to ask you this morning, when you are in your jobs, no matter what your job is, are you intentional about making that service? I know that when I put on that robe in the morning, I know that I'm given a great amount of authority. I'm given a great amount of power. And I can do one of two things. I can go out there and I can wield it. Or I can go out there and I can serve. I can listen to the people who come before me, those who don't have a voice. I can judge fairly the people that come before me. But I can treat each person that comes before me, no matter how they come before me. And sometimes they come before me in a rough way. I do criminal law. So anything ugly you've ever seen in the paper, I've handled. But what I've learned is that when people come before me, and the bench is high, just like this, it's crazy, right? So I'm looking down, <laughs> right? And I have to remember that the people who come before me, they are made in the image of God. So they are my brothers and my sisters. So if I come from a place of service, then I can see them as a human being, as someone who may have done something wrong or bad or horrible, but they are still children of God, amen? So when I put on the robe, sometimes, you know, it's hard. You have to, I have to be intentional about remembering why I'm here. And I'm here to serve. So think about your jobs, whatever you're doing. If you're working at Starbucks and serving that double latte extra hot with no foam, are you doing it as an act of service? How are you doing it? Amen? I absolutely understand and recognize that I stand on the shoulders of everyone who came before me. I appreciate that the governor of this state appointed me to be a judge, but I absolutely know in my heart that I was anointed by God and ordained by God to hold this position. So in gratitude, I serve from this position. I don't wield my power. Amen? I can't think of any other reason. I 
I can't think of any other reason that a poor little black girl from, from West Side of Fresno with no connections and no money and no political savvy would be in this position other than that God saw fit to put me here. So that's why I serve. Amen? Amen. The other thing that I want to share with us about service this afternoon is service is not just doing. And what I mean by that is if you serve here or if you serve on a job or you serve anywhere, you know, we're busy, we're doing, we're doing, we're doing. Um, but maybe we just get distracted. So I want to read for us Luke 10, 38 and 42. And this is a story of Mary and Martha. And if you don't know this story in the Bible, Mary and Martha had a brother named Lazarus, and they were loved by Jesus. And Jesus was on his journey, and he was stopping uh, into the house of Mary and Martha. And this is how it reads. Verse 38. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, and Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted. Say distracted. distracted. Martha was distracted by all of the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and she said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. This is what Jesus says in verse 41. Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it is doing, and it will not be taking, taken from her. Strike that. Strike that. Sorry. I'm in court. Mary has chosen what is better. <laughs> in court, when you don't like what you say, you say strike it, and it never existed. So somebody strike that back there. <laughs> Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. And so what I glean from this story is that Martha and Mary were in the very presence of Jesus, and Mary was seated at Jesus' feet, but Martha was distracted. She was busy. She was doing. She was doing. What better than to have Jesus here? And oftentimes we do that when we're serving. We're doing, we're doing, we're doing, and we forget why we're doing it, and we forget for whom we're doing it. We're doing it always to the honor of God, to the glory of God, right? And so she had the very presence of Jesus and she was so busy cooking and cleaning and doing that she forgot. So I wanna ask us, is there anywhere in our lives where we're doing and doing and doing, but we haven't stopped to realize that the very presence of God is here, amen? He's with us always. So let's not get caught up in the doing. Let's remember why we're doing it and let's remember who we're doing it for, amen? Now. I was thinking about the doing, and I was thinking back over my childhood, and we went to church almost every night. It's a wonder I ever graduated, because we had church nearly every night. But on New Year's Eve, we had watch service night, and that is the night where they would wash your feet as service, doing what Jesus did, right? Service. There were many times I never got a toe wet because they were doing it so fast. Move, get out of the way, child. Move, get out of the way, child. And so they would just rush us through, and I just thought, is this service? Is this service? Is this really what we're doing? And do we do this in our everyday lives? If we're serving here at the church or we're at work and we're supposed to be doing something, are we just doing it to do it, to say that we did it so we can check it off our list? Are we making it a lifestyle? If you're working for that boss and you don't like that boss, are you just giving them what they want with an attitude? <laughs> well, amen. Amen. So that brings me to my next point, which is service requires a heart, the right heart, the right attitude, and the right motivation. Amen? So when I say that, I looked at Ephesians 6, 6 through 7, and this is what it says. Don't just do what you have to get by. But work heartily as Christ's servants, doing what God wants you to do, and work with a smile on your face. Work with a smile on your face, always keeping in mind that no matter who happens to be giving the orders, you're really serving God. How many of us know that? That when we're working on our jobs, it doesn't matter what we're doing, we're supposed to be serving God. We're supposed to be working to serve God. Now, I have an example for you, and I can't think, this is the most amazing example. This is, uh, I was coaching a dear friend of mine, and um, she was uh, working on a project, and I was uh, supporting her as a coach does, and 
what I knew is that she may, she told me that she, she may be um, laid off. Big corporation, corporate America, you know, there are always layoffs. And she wasn't sure if she was going to be laid off or not. And so I just said, well, why are you working so hard if you don't even know if you're going to be here? And she said, because I'm not doing it for them. I'm doing it for him. And I thought, that is exactly what we should be doing. We should be doing it for him. So the next time that boss gets on your last nerve, remember that you're not turning in the report, filing the papers, getting it out for them. We're doing it as unto him. Amen? Amen. The other thing that I want to share with us is that service can be exactly where we are. Sometimes we think we have to go, and we should go. We've planned, you've all planned this beautiful time to go and serve, and I think that's awesome, and I think we should do that. But I think we should remember that every single day is an opportunity to serve. You can serve right in your house, and you're getting the children ready. Instead of fussing at them, maybe we could serve them. If you're bringing that spouse a cup of coffee or doing something with a sibling, we can do it as unto the Lord, and we can make it service and not just doing. Because we have to do anyway, right? So why not make it service? Why not get a, the right attitude adjustment and the right thoughts in our minds so that we can do it as service unto the Lord? It'll make your day go a whole lot smoother, I promise. I absolutely promise. The other thing that I want us to know is that service is for all of us. Service is not just for the rich. Service is not just for those with degrees. Service is for everyone. It doesn't matter who you are. You can be a child and you can serve. Service doesn't have to look any particular way. You can serve in many ways. I think the fact that my friends came here, I deem that service. That's just support for me. I appreciate that. I deem that to be service. And when I think about service, and um, I was listening to the radio, and they um, were talking about some of the people who were displaced from the fires, from the fires that we recently had. And so what this, what this group did is they, they coupled, or they, they matched people who uh, were displaced from the fires now, and they matched them with people who were displaced from the fires, uh, I think it was 10 years ago, it was a while ago. And what they did is they put those people together, and they just wanted the people who were just recently devastated to just, they needed somebody to listen. So the people who, who were serving were just simply listening on the phone. They were all over the state. They, were, they had moved, but all they did was listen. And those folks said, you know, it was so amazing and it was such a service for people just to listen to what I talked about. So you don't have to do anything. If you have two ears, you can listen to somebody and that is service. That is service. The other thing that we can do is that those same people said, that they talked to those individuals about how to make it over. They said, you know, you will make it. It is gonna to be tough, but you will make it. And they were so encouraged because somebody had gone through what they had went through already. So you can tell your testimony. We are overcome by the words of our testimony. That means you can share how you got through a breakup. You can share how you got through school. You can share how you went through a financial crisis. You can share how you went through a medical dilemma. And sharing that, is service. I just want us to see that service is not in some little box where you either write a check or go to a kitchen for two hours on Thanksgiving. Service is so much greater than that. Service should come from who we are. Service should be our lifestyle. So let me just ask this, because I'm going to be closing soon. Why is it that we don't serve, either individually or as a body of Christ or as a community or as a state? Or Why is it that we don't serve? Oh boy, selfish, some people don't know, pride, wow, got to make time, that's all true. I think that oftentimes, I don't know who yelled out selfish, but boy, right on point. I think oftentimes um, what we do is we serve when we feel like it. But if we only serve when we feel like it, how does that make the church different from anybody else? How is that different? If you only serve, if we only serve and do and love and give when we feel like it. Because how many people, I've felt three different ways since being here today, right? <laughs> Feelings change, they move, they, they do whatever, right? So we can't just serve and give and love based on how we feel. Jesus didn't do that, right? No matter what was happening, no matter what he was going through, he was serving, he was loving, he was giving. So let me just ask you this. If I ask you just to take a few minutes, and if I ask you to think about just today, how you slept in a warm bed, 
how you got up this morning and you, your house was still there, your car was still there, your family was healthy, you're healthy, you walked in here on your own power, you got beautiful clothes on, you all look great, right? You got your breakfast, you got your coffee. How does it make you feel that God would just simply just bless you with the breath that you're breathing right now? He didn't have to do that, but you're breathing right now, walking and talking. How does it make you feel that God blessed you like that? Good? Grateful? Grateful? Amen? Anybody else? You feel good. Now, what if I asked you to think about others, those who are displaced? You had a house today. You don't have a house tomorrow. Everything you own is gone or a loved one who is sick, or someone who can't even come to church, even though they have a desire to. How does that make you feel? Compassionate. It makes you feel for others. Empathetic, right? And so this is the deal. When we think about ourselves, that's all we can think about. How is this going to affect me? How much money is this going to cost me? How much time is this going to cost me? I can't get my Jordache jeans with a potato pie. Me. Me, 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 me. But if you know, if you think of what God has done for you, you're grateful. If you think about others, you feel compassionate. You feel empathetic. And that's when action happens. That's when you serve. So what I'm challenging you to do is to stop thinking about yourself and think about, one, how grateful you are for what God has done for us, number one. And number two, if we think about others, we are more likely to serve. Amen? Amen. I want to give you an example of how the thoughts, feeling, emotions works in a regular day. So if I get up and I have a good day, that's good, right? Because you want the judge to be in a good mood, right? <laughs> right? So if I, <laughs> you, you, want the, you, you want me to be in a good mood, right? <laughs> they make sure I have my coffee, right? They make sure I'm well taken care of, right? So if I begin to think about, say there is a lawyer. Any lawyers here? I love you lawyers. Woo! They can be difficult sometimes. <laughs> but if a, lawyer, if a lawyer says something or does something, and I take that personally, right? And... Then I begin to think about me. They're disrespecting me. What about my rules? What about me? What, am, I, am I in a place of service? I'm not. I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm reacting out of what I feel because of what I'm thinking about, which is me. But when I get on that bench and I decide, I don't care what you say, I don't care what you do, yes, you've been late 15 times, I'm not gonna put you in jail today, today. But if I begin to think about why am I really here? I'm really here to serve the people of Santa Clara County. And if I take my thoughts off myself and I think about who I'm serving, then everybody's day goes a little bit better. So this works in real life. It works every day. It works right where you are. And it is a lifestyle. So I want to ask us, what is it, if, if, those, if we know now what to think about in order to, to get into action, into service, I want to just talk a little bit about what we... What are the benefits of serving? Let's just think about it a little bit. What, what happens when we serve? How do you feel when you're out there serving your community or doing what you can, giving from your abundance? How do you feel? Somebody said, great, I feel fulfilled. I feel rich, just like your campaign. I feel rich when I'm able to give from my, from my overflow. This scripture is uh, Luke 6:38, and it says, give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full. It will be pressed down, shaken together, and making room for more. It'll be running over. It'll be poured into your lap. The amount that you give will determine the amount you get back. Let's just say that again. The amount that you give will be the amount that you get back. So I know that we think about this in terms of money, but this, Jesus was not talking about money when he said this. In previous verses, he had been talking about blessing those that curse you, he had been talking about giving and lending to those in need. Yeah. He'd been talking about loving your enemies and those who are unlovable. Right. He is talking about being merciful because God is merciful. Yeah. And he was talking about not judging. So when this scripture came up, he was saying, when you give grace, when you need it, you're going to get That's grace. 
When you give support to your sister or your brother who needs it, when you need it, and you will need it, support will come back to you. When you give mercy, mercy will come back to you when you need it. God will give us witty ideas. He's not in a box, right? God can give us anything. God gives us ideas and God gives us opportunities. I believe that I stand before you this morning because my life, because my, my family set a legacy of service. And I believe that where I stand today is because this is something that is pressed down, is shaken together, and this is running over. This is something I never imagined I could do or I could be. But because of a life of service, God saw fit to bless me. So I, ser- I use my life and I use every title, every Whatever I have, I use it to serve people because I think that is the only way to live. So I want us to make service a lifestyle. Amen? Amen. So I want to challenge you before I leave. And I can't order it, but I can just request it. (laughs) I'm just going to request it. And I'm going to request that you think about an activity that you do every day, right? We're busy every day. I'm just going to ask you to think of something that you do every single day. And I'm going to ask you to think about what it would take to make the thing that you do not just doing, but service. Working with kids, with the spouse, with the loved one, with a friend, with the boss that you don't really care for. What would it take? What ideas and thoughts would we have to change or modify to make what we do every day service? So if I can get a commitment, just seven days, one activity that you're already doing, think about what it would take to make that thing, that doing, into service. Amen? I want to thank you for allowing me to be here with you this morning. I want you to know that we are never more like Jesus than when we are loving, we are giving, and we are serving. God bless you.